This week on Goofing Off. Goofs. Kyle reviews Kaguya-sama. Goofs. Colin talks about Jump Force. Goofs. All this and more on Goofing Off. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Goofing Off. I'm Drew Brown. And I'm uh, Becca Tyler. Becca, why are you so tired? I'm still trying to recover from our Katsukon trip this weekend. How are you not tired? I'm still pretty wired on all the coffee and peeps I consumed. Well, I, I'm gonna go take a quick nap, but in the meantime, enjoy a look into our adventures at Katsukon. I'm Becca Tyler and we're here at Katsukon in National Harbor, Maryland, right by our nation's capital, right here in the Gaylord Hotel and Convention Center. Let's see what we can get ourselves into. <laughs> Let's go. And now I'm here with, and then what's your name? Sai. Sai, that's a really pretty name. Uh, and who are you cosplaying us today? I'm assuming it's uh, Danny Phantom, am I correct? Yes. <laughs> okay. Just female version. <laughs> I really like when people do gender bent things. I think it's really creative and it really like opens up the world of possibilities when cosplaying. How long have you been at the con so far? Uh, well, I've been here since Thursday night. Uh, got here kind of like late for registration, so I had to like rush in, and since then it's been like just running around doing things. <laughs> you've been so you've been here a while. What has your favorite thing been at the con so far? Your favorite experience? Um, I actually have not visited any panels yet, but I really am enjoying Artist Alley this year. I think there's a lot of like really good artists this year. There's a lot of interesting stuff. It's I, better than last year. <laughs> not hopefully not gonna jinx it, but. <laughs> I also really enjoyed the Artist Alley. That's where I spent a lot of my money. So, what, did you buy anything at the Artist Alley? Not yet. I was gonna go today. Usually Fridays I browse, and then Saturdays I'm like, you know what? Let me see what I find. If I make up my mind, if I want it, uh, there's some Pokemon terrariums. I would definitely suggest looking at those. They're, they look amazing. <laughs> experience at the con so far oh man I love the atmosphere everybody's so nice and so open you have people who are like either barely exposed or people who are wearing whole fur parkas and everybody's treated the same And then now I'm interviewing, and then what's your name? Hi, I'm, A I'm Ariel, also known as Lyra Cosplay. And the character I'm cosplaying is called Ochako. She's from My Hero Academia. I am a huge fan of Ochako from My, My Hero Academia, and I was really excited to see you cosplaying as her, and you looked great, by the way. Thanks. So between the artist gallery, the dealer's room, and the arcade, what is your favorite out of those three? Dealer's room, okay, because I love figurines and my husband collects Gundam, so like we're in there, I, we look for like, you know, like things that you can't find anywhere else and because people have them, they bring like the best of the best here, so the dealer's room is the room, I love it. So between like the dealer's room that we are right now, uh, the art gallery, and the game room, what place would you say would be your favorite? 
Um, I like the dealer's room the best because you get to see all the stuff that everybody made that they're selling. Yeah, it's my favorite. Um, I probably like the game room the best just because like I really like Super Smash Brothers, obviously. Um, so I'm always down to play some video games. Would you say the newest Super Smash is your favorite or do you like any of the older ones better? Um, the new Smash Brothers game is so good and Princess Peach is top tier in it. Yeah. <laughs> So, have you guys bought any merch at all? Anything from the year? Well, we bought today? this baby Goomba five minutes ago, but we're still running around. We're about to buy lots more. <laughs>
mainly because I want it to stay in place all day, and if it's exactly the same size as my head, there's a possibility of it being a little too loose. After that's done, I'm going to sew on a strip of blue fabric to create Soul's main patch. You can use any stitch you want, I'm just using this one because I can color over it with a sharpie and no one will see it. Next, I'm going to be working on his button on the other side of the headband. You'll need tan or yellow foam, as well as red. For the yellow, go ahead and cut out a circle. I'm tracing a button I have to make it even and achieve the size that I want. And then glue it on using all-purpose craft glue. Next, I'm sketching out the mouth shape that appears on the button in the red, and then I'm going to cut that out and glue it onto the yellow. and then you'll want to wait for a bit for it to dry. After that, I'm going to draw Soul's name on his tag. And then I'm gonna draw the design on the button. Then I'm going to fit the headband over my beanie that I wear at work, since I'm gonna be working at the campus Starbucks during the con. And then I'm going to apply my red contact lenses. And that's pretty much it. This was made to be a very minimalistic cosplay. I hope you guys liked it, and I'll see you all next time. Well, that's all I have for this character. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or want to suggest another cosplay for me to cover, don't be afraid to tweet me at ZTVGoofingOff with the hashtag CreateYourCharacter. Remember, I'm Becca Tyler, and I'll catch you the next time around on Create Your Character. Break time? Break time? Break, Break time. time. If you like what you see here on Goofing Off, be sure to like us on Facebook, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and follow us on Twitter. You're watching ZTV. So what do you have cooked up for us today, Drew? Well, Becca, for this episode I'm becoming you. Uh, but I'm not a food. No, I'm gonna be working at a coffee shop, like you do. Up next on Drew's Cooking. Hey everybody, uh, Drew Brown back again for another episode of uh, Drew's Cooking. This episode, uh... It's still cooking, uh, I think. We're in a coffee shop. Uh, cooking. It's cooking beans and making, uh, spicy liquid out of it. On Coffee Shop Tycoon. It's a game I found on Steam. Again! It's a trend with my segment. So, uh, let's get right into it. We're gonna play. So right after, right, uh, right from the start I'm on, uh, Pangea here. We got a nice globe. I'm gonna go to this little, uh, hexagon. A park location, a small little place in town. But remember, some things that you love started in a garage. I don't know what that means. Uh, I don't know anything that I've loved started in a garage, uh, except maybe my dad changing my oil or something. Welcome to my new coffee shop. Before you can start, you need a name for it. What should I name the coffee shop? This is a hard decision. I'm gonna call it uh, Colin Long. Which of these images best represents Colin Long?
Hmm. So we've got a choice between some sort of symbol, an L with two dots, a, a, a stain, a wine stain, some sort of some sort of red stain, a unicorn, a, a red diamond, rain, a, a scary eyeball, Santa Claus, a reindeer, a snowman, a cute doggy, and some sort of astrology symbol. I think if I were if if I were running a cafe with Colin the Long himself, I think I would go with this red thing because it looks like a strawberry, kind of. So this is my friend, Mr. Danger. I don't know why he's running coffee shops. Hello, entrepreneur. Welcome to the world of hot coffee and delicious muffins. Sorry, I love muffins. I get okay. Thank you, sir. Two thousand dollars for a counter. I'm gonna. Where should I put the thing? I can't put it. I'm gonna put it right in the front. I'm gonna put it right in the corner. Awesome. Working stations allow you to hire employees. The number of employees you can hire depends on your working station. I hope I can hire Becca. She works at a coffee shop, I think. Working stations also define how many machines you can have active or how many snacks you can sell. Mmm, snacks. Maybe I'll go find a muffin. But, but why does it, this guy's name Mr. Danger and he looks like Walter White? Why does he need muffins? I'll go find a muffin, but before you can, you must hire an employee. Click on the icon with the bold employee that looks like my father. What? That? Your father looks really weird, sir. So I've got Landon Bynum. He wants $600 for, per month? Per week? Per year? $600 a year is something I can work with. Sherry Berryhill. Oh. Sherry Berryhill. I don't know, Landon Bynum or Sherry Berryhill? I think I think her name alone uh, warrants a hire from that. Sherry Berryhill, you're on the list. So just like in real life, uh, employers uh, take one look at your resume for five seconds and find out that your name is Sherry Berryhill, and they hire you immediately. So just we're learning some real life lessons on Drew's cooking right now. Two thousand dollars. This better be made of solid gold. I love these shiny machines, but we need to know which the coffee to prepare. Click the coffee icon. All these coffees are locked deep inside my, my, self, my, my subconscious. White mocha is something I just cannot achieve. Stra salted caramel is level five. I have, to, I have to be able to solve complex mathematical equations before I can do that. $450 for regular coffee? Sometimes you just need to wake up. I understand that. I have unlocked regular coffee from deep inside my psyche. Your coffee supply will take time to arrive. Only 30 seconds. Don't panic. That is some fast shipping. We will summon Zeus and skip the waiting time for now. All right. It's, it, you know, sometimes when you're waiting on your package from Amazon or eBay or whatever, you, sometimes you just got to summon Zeus. All right. We did it. Zeus. Thank you, Zeus. My coffee. My coffee's here. Coffee's here. It automatically assigns your brew and espresso machines. Time to brew some fresh coffee. This is the brewing screen. You can reach it by clicking on your brewer or espresso. I don't want to talk about espresso right now. It's time for Latalia. Let All right, let's go. It's time to open. Open for business. Hello, young man. That's Tony Hendershot. Can I click on him? Holy mermaids. 800 bucks for a drink? Well, considering months only last three minutes here, I guess you have some makes fast money in some way. Yeah, eight hundred dollars. That's that's what you're getting charged. It's almost as much as Starbucks. I can't. Uh, I can't name him. Drink preference. He likes sweet stuff. Uh, he bought a regular coffee. What do I do now? That's Sherry Berryhill. All right, he, I, that guy forked over eight hundred buckaroonies from to Colin Long. I can buy another air pot. I can hire someone. I can add, oh, a table. All right, we're gonna add a table. One table. I'm gonna put it right in the, no, not in the, yeah, we'll put it right in the corner. And I think that's good. How do I get out of this? Please, I just wanna leave the inventory screen. Oh, okay, so iced coffee comes out in the summertime. <laughs> I need level two though. How do I get to level two? Oh, I saved my game. Very nice. Hmm, okay, okay. I have one, two clients. 
All right, I think it's time we bought another. I think it's time we let these pe the good patrons sit down. So we're going to add a chair for two grand. Wow. Isn't this beautiful? Oh, no, I need to, I need to make more coffee. How do I do that? <sighs> coffee, I want to drop. No, I don't want to drop it. No. How do I make more coffee? Brew, quick, there's someone coming. I'm sorry, sir. You'll have to wait 30, 25 seconds. No! Come back! Please! No! No! Come back! Colin Long needs you! No, I lost two customers because they had they would not wait 20 seconds for fresh brewed coffee. I guess that how that's how it is in the food industry. Food slash drink industry. Look at look at Sherry Berryhill just Tip tapping away. Oh, whoa, I did something when I did that funny joke. What, how did I do that? Oh no, I need to go back to the original way. How did I do that? How did I do that? Uh, I can, I think I can do it down here. Yes, okay. Hello, Carolina mini, mini jars and Dorsey Duck. <laughs> yes, bored, says Dorsey Duck. I want Dorsey Duck to be a regular, please. Colin Long demands it. Oh, he's sitting at my table! Yeah! Dorsey Duck, thank you! Look at that. Total profit, negative $33,050. Ah, whatever. That's fine. Look at Sherry Berry Hill. Going for it. She earned $600? That's like... <laughs> wait, that's... She's earning $600, like, a week? That's less than one cup of coffee. That's $800. She can't buy a cup of coffee! In a week, my rep has increased. Oh no, that means I have to make more coffee. Oh, okay, so I can only have one brewer. How do I not buy this brewer? I have uh, accidentally bought another, I have bought the same brewer. Oops. Uh, not enough coffee. Oh no, I need to buy coffee. This is the main screen of the menu manager. It shows it, okay. Oh no, oh no, okay, I need to buy more coffee. I need to buy more coffee. I wanna create an autumn menu. I can create a menu? Wow. Oh man, I don't know if I can handle this. Uh, 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 oh no. How do I buy coffee? I need to buy coffee. I'm running out of coffee, the people. Not the people. No, I don't have any more coffee. Please come back. I'll just buy coffee if I can figure out how to do it. Oh no. I want to. I want. I need to buy the food truck. I need to go to the food truck. I need to go to the truck. No. Brewer, order coffee. Yes. Yes. Two thousand dollars for a pound. I'm gonna order three pounds. They'll probably all go stale by the time I, uh, <gasps> whoa, what's loom, loomy, loom, I'm going to order a pound of loom, regular blend, $2,000, coffee is expensive, we, we must be on like a worldwide shortage of coffee and I'm like the only one in the world who has access to these sick, secret supplies of coffee. Let's check the, let's check the budget real quick, let me pause. Uh, where's the budget? Uh, the budget. See? We're only down $29,000 and 850, I mean $29,850. See? Oh, I've only sold one, I only sold one cup of coffee this month. I waited a whole month for that, for that, for that uh, coffee to show up. I need marketing at level two, okay. Research level five. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, okay. So we're good. We just need, I think we can, uh, no, I think I'm going to hire another employee. We just got to wait it out. It seems like cool. All right. See four chairs that only cost me like, like a half a year's worth of money. Cool. All right. Back to normal mode. Hello, madam. Summer is here. Good thing I'm only still serving regular coffee. Nothing else. No iced coffee. Nothing. 
can I make iced coffee yet? Like, please? Please. I need to be, I need to be level two. Why? My market, I'm marketed towards teens, oh, casual coffee drinkers. Only, probably because I only serve one beverage. A cup of joe, that's all you get. Colin Long is a basic shop. A simple man, a simple man that Colin Long. But a wonderful man. It's summertime. S Sherry Barrymore, you let someone get, get into the cash register and steal $2,579? How? That's like, that's like four cups of coffee I, you stole. I have unlocked iced coffee. Sherry, please. I'm gonna have to fire, I'm not, I'm not gonna fire you, Sherry. Don't worry, I love you. Milk and coffee. Look at those earthy colors. All right, I'm gonna unlock all these drinks so I can make more of them. And probably ruin my, go bankrupt. Americano, I'll save espresso for later. Oh, wow. Okay, yeah, we need to hire someone else. All right, let's hire someone else. Uh, let's hire service. I need to hire another barista. I don't, I don't have enough money. Oh. Oh, it, it's, it costs a lot to hire somebody. Oh, no. I have, I have, oh, no, there's such a line. Oh, no, Sherry Berryhill can't handle it. And what's a blender do? What does a, who wants a milkshake? I can make milkshakes with a blender? Really? That's all I can do with the blender? Cook, cookie? I already bought cookie. No one's buying my cookies. Oh, wait, I, that's because I didn't order food. Okay. That'll explain it. This guy's mad. I'm sorry, sir. I will come. I will become old before I order. Wow, this is really fresh. All right, yeah, cool. Make fun of me, then say my coffee's fresh. Those three people clipping into each other. I like the relaxing music this game gives you. I must say, it's very nice. Nineteen point. Oh no, what's wrong with her? What's wrong with Sherry? She's only level two. I'll, I'll give her a little raise. Oh, she's doing bad because she expects a more a bigger raise. Oh, fine, Sherry, I'll give you another raise. She's man, I'm making a thousand dollars. That's enough to buy a cup of coffee and maybe a couple like a candy bar or something. Yeah, you've been working here for like a year. It's about time for a raise. You're right. I'm sorry, Sherry, Barry, Larry, Gutheri. The market is normalized. Wow. Okay. So this game's pretty good. I mean, uh, it's a lot of uh, hard work making a coffee shop. Never thought I would uh, experience that. Please come and buy my coffee so I can make money to hire someone else. I want to see what the, their funny name will be. You know, this is honestly a really good step up from uh, the horrible monstrosity that was last week's game, or last whatever period of time this is game. Because wow, I'm I'm not I'm not throwing things on the ground, uh, trying to pick them up using only my arms, and not my hands, and screaming, while uh, this poor Waldo Caranco uh, tries to watch, in horror as I spill his food on the ground, his raw burger, and do nothing with it, and then just give up and he leaves. So I guess this is a this is a big step from last week. So uh, Drew's cooking uh, kind of stalled at first on the on the runway, but then uh, after, after a good jump start from uh, the local uh, airplane jump starter, we got, off the, we got off the line and we are flying. Barely, but we're flying. We're making coffee, it's cooking, I think. We're cooking uh, beans and making them into cute liquids and serving them through the hands of Sherry Berry Larry. All right, time to hire somebody. Service made me feel like a king. Everyone is so friendly. Thank you, reviewer. That's a decent review, I think. All right, time to hire another barista. All right, which one? So we choose, we got Landon Arigia or Wilburn Lanza. Let's see, he wants 700, he wants 700. Uh, 356447, uh, 3064.52. Um, so I either got barista or speed. I think we got Sherry Berry Larry, so we'll hire Wilburn Lanza. Wow, there he is. I think we, we hired somebody. We got this going. 
Um, I think it's about time, fellas. Time to close the restaurant. Just, just the spring came. We're back, we're back in spring. It's been a year since we opened up uh, Colin Long, and I think that's about a good place. So honestly, I thought this game was pretty good. Uh, definitely a step up from the first episode of Drew's Cooking, where I uh, wanted to uh, gouge my eyes out for half the episode because I couldn't pick anything up with my rusty uh, knife of a spatula. But we went up, we went from that to serving coffee to uh, some happy, some sad patrons, and uh, kind of enjoying a life with uh, my Cherry Barrymore and this new guy, which uh, Wilburn Lanza. I think me and Sherry, me and Sherry here really bonded through the, the entire time. We're real close now. I'm really happy to have met her, and I'm really happy to have uh, done this episode. If you have any more uh, cooking games or uh, coffee cooking games uh, you want to suggest to me, uh, tweet me at ZTVGoofingOff with the hashtag Drew's Cooking. Until next time, I'm Drew, back, back in my uh, cool coffee shop, calling long, serving coffee to everybody, anybody and everybody. We'll see you next time. Being funny is really hard, Becca. Well, Drew, you know, here's my take on how to be funny. So first you need, like, inner strength, and second, you need a large-scale model of my favorite... If you like what you see here on Goofing Off, be sure to like us on Facebook, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and follow us on Twitter. You're watching ZTV. Becca, love is war. Drew, who hurt you? We'll save that story for another time. Here's Kyle talking about Chika, I mean Kaguya-sama, love is war. Up next on Animanga. Hello anime and manga fans, I'm Kyle Glockner and welcome back to another episode of Animanga. We've really come a long way at the anime and manga industry and there have been many, many different series over the years. So much so that it's getting harder and harder to find something truly unique or special these days. Admittedly, when I first heard about the show I'm reviewing today, I expected it to just be a standard rom-com with a bit of a twist, but after watching the first half of the series I realized that it was so much more than just that. So today, I'll be talking about Kaguya-sama, Love is War. Kaguya-sama, Love is War is about the student council at Shuchin Academy. More specifically, this show tells the story of student council president Miyuki Shiragane and vice president Kaguya Shinomiya, who appear to be an ideal couple. In reality, both of them have too much pride to confess, so their goal is to get the other person to confess first. Now this sounds like a pretty simple premise that would make for a decent show, but probably nothing too special. But with each new episode, this show just keeps getting better and better. I went from barely chuckling at the first two episodes to bursting into laughter during the next four. The last time I can remember an anime making me laugh this much was the dub of Ghost Stories, and that alone should tell you just how good this show is. But I've probably only been talking for a little over a minute, so I'll keep telling you even more reasons as to why you should watch this show. The concept Love is War is by no means a new concept or unique to this series, but it's not something I feel we very commonly see, especially in anime. The idea that love is a battle and confessing means you lose sets this show up to give us an interesting perspective on a budding relationship between our two main characters. One of the most important aspects of this show is the relationship between Miyuki and Kaguya, and their dynamic is handled very well. The contrast of their appearances as these prim and proper high school students on the outside while watching them enact their ridiculous escapades that honestly remind me of Tom and Jerry episodes is downright hilarious. Seeing one of their incredibly well-crafted and meticulous plans be completely uprooted by the most random circumstance keeps the show interesting and helps maintain fantastic pacing and flow of these events. But at the same time, we get to see them in some pretty vulnerable states and are shown how they truly feel underneath their almost larger-than-life student council personas. And we see some genuine affection and care for the other, which makes me really want each of them to succeed. Now while I've been talking about the relationship between Miyuki and Kaguya, I feel it is absolutely necessary to mention the other character that plays a huge role in their lives, and that is the student council secretary, Chika Fujiwara. Chika is, honestly, the best character in the show. 
She often always has some sort of major impact on both Miyuki and Kaguya's plans, whether they try to use her to their advantage, or she unknowingly ruins everything one of them has worked toward. I'll be honest in saying, I'm not usually a huge fan of the funny meme character of a show, but Chika pulls this role off flawlessly. She brings the perfect amount of chaos into the otherwise meticulous and perfected situations created by both Miyuki and Kaguya. Also, she's just really funny and cute. With my personal favorite moments being the band word game from episode 4, the volleyball training in episode 5, and of course, the ending song of episode 3. Yet despite being the funny meme character of the show, she does have some genuine contribution to the show and has some fantastic character moments to add to her own complexity. I'm really glad that, at least for now, she hasn't been designated as just another love interest in the show. It's a genuinely refreshing change of pace for a character in an anime rom-com, and I hope that more shows take this approach in the future. Overall, Kaguya-sama Love is War is fantastic and one of my favorite shows of the winter 2019 season. It is one of the funniest shows I've watched and I can genuinely recommend it to most people, even if you aren't a huge anime fan. While it's only slated for 12 episodes, the manga is currently sitting at 12 volumes. Admittedly, I've been waiting to fully dive into the manga until after the anime is finished airing, but if you just can't get enough of the tsundere love antics, you can always pick up the manga for more hilarity. Kaguya-sama Love is War is directed by Mamoru Hatakayama, written by Yasuhiro Nakanishi, and animated by A1 Pictures, while the manga was written and illustrated by Aka Akasaka. With the saturation of generic rom-coms and harems that come with each new season of anime, this show definitely stands out among all of them as a genuine, funny, and overall fantastic show. Definitely one to check out this season. But, that's all the time I have for today, so let me know what you think by tweeting me at ZTVGoofingOff using the hashtag Animanga. Till then, I'm Kyle Glockner. This has been Animanga. And that's how to be funny. Wow, I can't believe I learned all these great skills and I'm now able to execute complex humor and laughter tactics. I'd like to start with my own life experience. I was born in a small hospital in this side of Ohio in Mad <laughs> If you like what you see here on Goofing Off, be sure to like us on Facebook, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and follow us on Twitter. You're watching ZTV. I don't know where Becca went, but I can tell you that Colin is up next with the Jump Force! Get it? Because like, you know, I jumped onto the screen. Uh, exactly. Colin is talking about Jump Force. Up next. Hey fellas, this is Colin and you're watching Magic Strawberry. With Shonen Jump turning 50 just last year, Spike Chunsoft cobbled together 40 different anime characters from 16 different series that were mainstays in Shonen Jump's weekly manga series for a largely uneven fighting game experience. This is Jump Force. The story mode is definitely not this game's strong suit. Spike Chunsoft made a curious decision to set the story in the real world, but nonetheless it starts off well enough with Frieza tearing up Times Square until Goku arrives to foil his plans, with his fist of course. Meanwhile, a human bystander whom you can customize is approached by Trunks who then sticks a cube in him and then this gives your character powers. From here you are taken to a hub area where it is explained that the manga worlds are merging together with the real world and the cubes that Trunks used earlier are being used to turn the evil characters into Venoms. Hence, the Jump Force was created to stop the Venoms and return things back to the way they were. Jump Force is divided into three teams, Alpha, led by Goku, Beta, led by Luffy, and Gamma, led by Naruto. You choose to join one of the three teams, and from there, the story mode falls apart. To either find a new mission, play an online match, or offline match, you wander around a hub area that's just generally unremarkable. Where Dragon Ball Fighters at least had an interesting art direction as far as their menu hub was concerned, Jump Force doesn't have that going for it at all. The animations are stiff, the upgrade system is obtuse, and you're not given any directions as to where you need to find the next mission in the story. So you're left with wandering a huge hub just to find where you have to go next. The cutscenes are even worse. The character models are interesting, the audio syncing is non-existent, and every character in the frame literally just stands there, only moving their mouths to indicate that they are indeed speaking. They are barely animated. 
The biggest crime is that they round up all of these great characters from series beloved by many people, and they do nothing with them. They almost never have interesting interactions with each other, and even when they do, it's spoiled by stilted animations. Thankfully, the actual fighting in this fighting game is much better, but it's also pretty substandard. Combos are non-existent, you use the same three buttons for every single character, the only thing separating each of them of course is their own unique set of abilities. But once you get past the novelty of it all, you'll find that there just isn't a whole lot of depth to the fighting mechanics. After a few hours, there's nothing new to see. Every character has similar light and heavy attacks, and they all have four two-button abilities. That's it. To its credit, the fighting mechanics are fluid, and the ability animations are flashy and fun to look at. The best thing about Gem Force is its huge roster, and it's an exceptional roster at that. Like I said earlier, there's 40 characters from several series, such as Dragon Ball, Naruto, One Piece, Bleach, My Hero Academia, Yu Yu Hakusho, Hunter x Hunter, Saint Seiya, Yu-Gi-Oh, Fist of the North Star, City Hunter, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, Dragon Quest The Adventures of Dai, Roroni Kenshin, and Black Clover. Light Yagami and Ryuk from Death Note are also featured, but only in the story. Given the fact that Light can kill anyone literally by writing their names down, it's understandable that they left them off the official roster. Half the fun of Jump Force is to create your own anime dream matches and seeing how your favorite characters pair off against one another. But like I said, this gets old after a while. Jump Force to sum it up is a huge missed opportunity. The story mode does nothing to take advantage of the many crossovers we see throughout the game. The hub area is boring, navigating your way through the narrative is needlessly difficult, and the cutscenes are elementary at best with the minimal animation ruining what should have been fun moments. The combat, while fun to look at, is empty. There's simply nothing new to do after a few hours of playing, and it leaves very little reason to come back to it at all. Still, it is fun to see all these characters together, no matter the context. Regardless, the novelty still does wear off. I give Jump Force a 5 out of 10. Thanks for watching Magic Strawberry. Feel free to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and follow us on Twitter at ZTB Goofing Off. Bye! Goo. <laughs> True, that was hilarious! Yes, Becca. <laughs> Thanks to you, I've been enlightened on the very essence of humor. I am now able to solve major world problems using only my own witty jokes and one-liners. I will now solve world hunger. There once was a wild duck who, while... If you like what you see here on Goofing Off, be sure to like us on Facebook, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and follow us on Twitter. You're watching ZTV. Drew, have you seen my wallet anywhere? Becca, you really need to stop losing your wallet. No, but I swear it wasn't me this time. I think it was actually stolen. Oh, uh, maybe Matt Reed took it. He is talking about Sea of Thieves after all. Hello everyone, my name is Matt Reed, and welcome back to another episode of Double Take, where I take a second look at games and movies to see if they're as good or as bad as everyone says they are. This week, I am bringing you an exciting and familiar open world game. No Man's Sky, I mean, Sea of Thieves. Sea of Thieves is an open world multiplayer game that focuses on multiplayer interactions, weaving together PvP and PvE as one and the same experience, focused on open sea ship combat with large amounts of exploration in the mix. This recipe seems like the perfect storm for a game to thrive, yet upon release the game was met with moans and groans of boring end game and overpriced grinding. I wanted to get into this step by step as someone who has never played this game before. Usually the first thing I do is I would start off with how I enjoyed the story, but besides small journal entries and role play this game has no story to speak of. So let's start with what I liked about this game instead. The first thing that I noticed and one of the first things that I started to attempt to master was the combat. The ship battles were hectic, having to balance repairing your ship with assaulting the enemies, sometimes being outnumbered 8 to 1. It was easily the most rewarding part of this game, even when fighting the titanic megalodon or the legendary kraken, and coming so close to losing all of our hard earned loot each time. I only wanted more of those chance encounters. The next part that I enjoyed about this pirate epic was the exploration. 
Though cartoony, the animation is excellent in the atmosphere of pulling off silly pirate treasure hunts, and I especially enjoyed the way that you are forced into learning the map, using compass directions and judging landmarks to find your valuable target. I think that other games looking for a way to do some treasure finding could take some notes from this game. Now that I've touched on some of the positive things that I have to say about this game, I'm going to talk about some of the problems that I had with this one. One of the number one things that I can agree with from the release of this game was the grinding. This is a multiplayer game, so in theory you can avoid all grinding by just PvP combat, but this isn't always easy to come by. About half the time, me and my friends have come across dead servers, which aren't always fun. When you're sailing the seas with no threats to you, it becomes menial grinding. While there is a large amount of things to do in this game, it boils down to the same thing. You're just farming gold to increase reputation and buy cosmetic items. Yes, there are many different ways of doing this, but the main objective ways of earning loot, not just chance encounters with large oceanic creatures, all become pretty repetitive. After a few long sessions of sailing and looting, you start to realize that the greatest things you are farming money for are fancier looking ship adornments and wardrobe options, other than reputation to unlock higher missions to do the same thing over again. The worst part about it is that the loot is more random than I think it should be, so you could fight waves of skeletons and dig up many treasures for a small payout. The worst part about this is that after taking an extremely long journey receiving mediocre loot for your effort, you still have a chance to have your ship sunken on the perilous journey back to the vendors to cash in, leaving you and your crewmates now broke and floating to the bottom of Davy Jones' locker. The last thing I'm going to mention about the specific downsides of this game is the sailing time. Sometimes while sailing, while rare, there are sea battles that are extremely entertaining. Every other time, however, can be boring, especially if you have to go a great distance as you are just coasting through the water, not much to do in a straight line, sometimes slower than usual as you might have to sail against the wind, and that's no fun. Now, it's time for that age-old question you have to ask with any massive multiplayer game. Is it only fun with a crew of scurvy pirate mates, or is it better flying solo? And once again, that question is very hard to answer. Starting with a simple answer, don't play this game solo. It is not meant for a solo outing, and you probably won't make it more than a day of playing on your own. I know I didn't. On the multiplayer side, I've had two completely different experiences. I've played with some random people and had a moderately fun time. But when I played with my longtime gaming friends, I had a blast. I guess what I'm trying to say here is that the experience is what you and a group of friends make it. To sum things up, if you're looking for an efficient and gritty pirate game that takes itself seriously, then look elsewhere. But if you're looking for a cartoonish adventure for you and some friends to pull some pretty ridiculous and zany things, then Sea of Thieves is right for you. I will, however, mention that this game still has a ridiculous base game price of $60. But there are all sorts of deals through Microsoft and other apps where you can access the game for cheaper, so I recommend looking into that. If you have any thoughts, questions, or concerns on how to sail the seven seas, agree with me, or even disagree with my opinion, please feel free to let me know on our Twitter at ZTVGoofingOff using the hashtag DoubleTake. My name is Matt Reed, and this has been DoubleTake. So, Becca, I heard Clayton's talking about Silver Surfer on Comic Therapy. Wait, is, is that allowed? Yeah, why, why wouldn't it be? Because it's Silver Surfer. He doesn't exactly wear... You have no idea what Silver Surfer looks like, do you? Nope. And I can't wait to hear what Clayton has to say about him. Comic Therapy. Hello, viewers. My name's Clayton Schrock, and welcome back to Comic Therapy. Today, I'm talking about someone who's incredibly strong, has a bald, shiny head, and whose name starts with the letter S. Another fantastic creation by the one and only Jack Kirby. Silver Surfer is a now iconic comic character even appearing in both movies and TV shows. This Metal Surf dude is charging the cosmic waves of our first revamped episode of Comic Therapy. First appearing in Fantastic Four issue number 48, the Silver Surfer was a herald to the world destroyer Galactus. He's shiny all over and he gets his powers from his board. This includes cosmic powers like matter manipulation, super strength, regeneration, and the ability to travel faster than the speed of light. The Silver Surfer is most well known for his appearance in the 2007 film Fantastic Four, Rise of the Silver Surfer, but many also know him pretty well from several cartoons scattered across recent decades. 
Now, while all these appearances of the Silver Surfer were amazing upon release, I believe it's time we get a new revamped Silver Surfer fresh for the big screen. He'd be a great addition for Infinity War Endgame if that whole Fox thing would've worked out. His visual effects even looked pretty good in 2007 from what I could remember, but they'd probably be out of this world by now. To prove just how cool it'd be to watch this hero tail whip Thanos in his big raisin face, I took to the streets to see what the people thought and find out what they knew about the Silver Surfer. Alright, beautiful day on the Akron beaches. I have turned myself silver. I'm gonna surf around and see what some people think about the Silver Surfer. So, let's go see what people think. Hey, how would you feel about uh, Silver Surfer coming in uh, the new like Avengers movie or something? Silver Surfer? Yeah. Not unless they did the ultimate version of Silver Surfer where he okay. has the multiple jaws. Okay. And that All version right. where Galactus is a pod that comes down in yeah. person. Much prefer that version. The Silver Surfer they've done so far. Not, not, you not true justice. He's you didn't gotta, like the 2007? They gotta, they gotta show his power. They okay. gotta show him as a, as a force. He's not a person, he's a force. Right. He's All a right. force of nature. So you, you think he's a pretty cool guy though? He, he's like, well, like top. He top surfs, guy. he's silver, that's kind of cool, you know? Surfer you, guys yeah. are cool. Can you tell who I am, like what character, or any character? Uh, no, I'm sorry, I cannot. So do you know like Marvel movies and like superhero movies and stuff? A smidgen. Alright, how do you feel about the Silver Surfer in the Fantastic Four movies like earlier on? I like the first one. The first one? Okay, the first one was good. Do you think the Silver Surfer would be good in like these future Marvel movies like in uh, Avengers and stuff? I know I didn't like the one that he was in. <laughs> Alright. The original one. That's okay, but that's that okay. could be, you know. You think he could be better? That was bad. Do you think it'd be cool to see like the Silver Surfer in like a more recent Marvel movie? Yeah. I don't know and I don't care. Yeah, because it was bad. Well, he's kind of cool because uh, he kind of does whatever he wants. So how do you feel about the Silver Surfer in movies? Fantastic. It's about time. All right. I'm wet, muddy, cold. My paint is sticky and coming off. But uh, I think it was a good time, and I think we got some uh, good information about Silver Surfer. I think people do want him in a new movie. So, Marvel, get on that. Back to you, Clayton. Thanks, Clayton. It looked pretty cold out there. Glad it wasn't me. So, that's what the people had to say about the Silver Surfer. Do you have any fun facts about this Metal Surf dude? How would you feel about him appearing in a future Marvel movie, especially after the Fox merger? You can let me know all of this, and what comic character you'd like me to hit the streets with next by tweeting at ZTVGoofingOff using my hashtag ComicTherapy. My name's Clayton Schrock, and until next time, surf on bros. I laughed, I cried, I cooked, and I crafted. I'm still thinking about Chica and her credit stance. It really had an emotional effect on me. Well, I wish we could stick around for more goofing off, but unfortunately, this show is at its conclusion. Don't we all? Anyway, until next time, remember to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram, subscribe to our YouTube channel for extra content. Until next time, I'm Drew Brown. And I'm Becca Tyler, and thank you for taking the time to goof off with us. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another semester. I mean, another semester. Oh, wow, we're <laughs> going back. We're going back. All right. Becca, love is war. Drew, who hurt you? I don't remember. <laughs> I forgot my lines. <laughs> I do remember, in fact, but I didn't remember my lines. Okay. So that, that was a long time ago. Stop talking. <laughs> All right, Drew, and that's how you make a paper airplane.
I got a rock. <laughs> this program was produced by ZTV at the University of Akron. Do you want to gain experience in video production, professional social media, or working with real clients? Visit the UA School of Communications online or follow us on social media to learn more. ZTV. Make media make a difference.